Hello, today we're talking about Hu Dao, a character that has been out for a long time, but that is still a bit hard for most people to grasp perfectly. Specifically, this is a guide that we kind of take for granted, you know how she works at a basic level. So I won't explain her abilities, but I will focus on her preferred themes, playstyles, artifacts, weapons, and best way to invest in her, and so on, in a more uh, analytical way. So let's start. So for this video, I'd like to tell you right away what I think about this character in terms of meta power level, and the rest of the discussion of this video will be based on this premise. Hu Tao is probably still the best single target carry when it comes down to no signature, constellation, zero discussions, and she still holds this title when you put things like his constellation one in the conversation or stuff of Oma. Since these are layers of investment that raise her ceiling comparatively higher than other characters in the game, she starts falling off a bit when you put higher constellations in the discussion, but I guess this won't concern the majority of my viewers. But having said this, the important things to understand is that Hu Tao is also a character whose results can vary wildly depending on how you use her, so it's important to understand how to play her perfectly. As a reminder, if you enjoy my theory crafting videos, you can support me by subscribing and leaving a thumbs up, and also following me on the new Twitter account. Starting from the first thing you're always going to have to deal with, her combos. Nowadays, I still get a lot of questions about what's the best combo for Hu Tao, and the answer is it depends, like for most things in life. It would be probably accurate to say that she has two main combos, one safer and one riskier, and both are kind of on the same level. The safe one is the two normal attacks and a charge attack with a cancel combo, and the risky one is the one normal attack and a charge attack with a cancel combo all spammed, of course. The main difference between these two combos is that for the two normal attacks one charge attack combo, you consume less stamina because you end up trading one charge attack or two for more additional normal attacks. This is more comfortable at Constellation Zero where Hu Tao actually uses stamina for charge attacks. So the result is that the no two normal attack one charge attack combo is both more comfortable and realistically higher in terms of damage than the normal attack charge attack spam. Both of these combos are preferable to be used with a jam cancel because the dash cancel, while more intuitive and also faster, adds an extra stamina consumption to the mix, so it's not ideal at all. The constellation one kind of fixes the issue for the normal attack charge attack spam combo because it nullifies the stamina consumption of the charge attack, allowing you to spam as many charge attacks as you want within the elemental skill duration for Hu Tao. But unironically, the constellation one adds another issue to the mix for the normal attack charge attack spam combo, because since there is no stamina consumption for charge attacks, it's easier and also better to just cancel combos with a dash. The problem is that if you use charge attacks too frequently, you start entering a cooldown for the dash, so every third charge attack you will need to cancel with a jump, which is less ideal frame-wise than just dashing every time, which is something the two normal attacks that charge attack combo can do actually. The result is that while the difference gets smaller with the constellation one, the two normal attacks charge attack combo still holds the title as the probably most efficient combo for Hu Tao, although it's not the most intuitive. In terms of weapon rankings, there aren't essential difference compared to when she came out. Staff of Homa is obviously still the best weapon, it's the signature, and she has still Dragon's Bane and Deathmatch as some low cost options. In terms of new 5 star weapons though, she got the Staff of the Scarlet Sands, the Sino signature, which she can use very well, because it's a weapon that takes the elemental mastery stat Hu Tao scales so well with and it makes it produce extra attack for her, so uh, it's a match made in heaven. Additionally, she got a new low cost option that is actually her best low cost option, if you want to consider the battle pass low cost, because the new battle pass weapon, the Ballad of the Fjords, 
is actually very good for her, even at Refinement 1. In that Refinement 5, it's definitely better than Dragon's Bane and Deathmatch, and it competes with the staff of the Scarlet Sand, so it's incredibly good. It does require her to have three different elements on the team, but with Total, this will basically happen most of the time, excluding things like Funerational, which we'll talk about later. So basically, in terms of weapons, her ceiling is unchanged, but her floor has gotten higher. For the artifacts, same old, same old. The Shimenawa set and the Crimson Witch set are neck and neck. In terms of damage, there is no real difference between these two sets. But there is a difference in terms of playstyle, because the Shimenawa set will make a defensive option on the team much more needed, like a shielder or a healer, because it makes her burst much more inconsistent, and since her burst is the main healing option for Hu Tao, she will be much more prone to die without a real defensive option on the team. Since the Crimson Witch set doesn't have this issue, it's probably more consistent, but in general it's, it's just splitting hairs. Other options include the Gilded Dream set, which can actually put a real fight in its best case scenario. And I was almost forgetting the new option that arised with Fontaine, the Marashu C set. This is actually pretty interesting for Hu Tao. On teams where you have a healer, so Bennett teams, which are, by the way, the seeding teams for Hu Tao, but we'll get to this later, the Marashu C set can get enough stacks to be useful in the first part of the rotation. And overall, it stacks up pretty decently to the best Huda options while allowing you to get more damage early in the rotation, which is pretty interesting. In terms of stat building, the Elemental Mastery Sand is better than the HP% percent Sand most of the time, and the only time they're really comparable in terms of damage is when you use Elemental Mastery weapons like Pallad of the Fjords or Dragon's Bane, which make a more elemental mastery less needed due to the diminishing returns. So, finally, in terms of teams, what are Hutao's best teams? The general consensus is that the double hydro teams are what's most comfortable for Hutao, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're the best, at least not all the time, because when we speak of Hutao ceiling damage, the, the best option would be a simple Hutao hyper team that can be used with either Shinch or Yelan, but that is actually best with Yelan. This is what most commonly used in speedruns, because it just magnifies Hu Tao's damage so much that all the investment you put on her just starts feeling much more meaningful. There are many variants of this theme, but the one I prefer the most is the one where you pair Hu Tao and one of Shinsho and Yelan with Kazuha and Bennett. Not only this variant is the best in terms of damage, but it's also in terms of comfort, because Kazuha absorbing Hydro with his burst at the start of the rotation will make the Hydro application on enemies much more consistent, and as a result it will make Hu Tao's vape consistency much better, especially in AoE. It is generally a single target team, especially with Yelan, because her application tends to be more inconsistent in AoE than Shin Cho's, which is stronger by default. But it's still a team that functions decently in AoE, and it's by far the best team for boss killing for Hu Tao, which in my opinion is the main reason to use her, so overall it's probably the, one of the best teams you can use. Switching to the double Hydro variants, the main benefit of this core is that you can use basically any unit as the fourth slot while still having pretty great results. It comes with a much lower ceiling than the Hyper team I just talked about, but it compensates with more team flexibility and ease of use, which just makes the team much more consistent which is important for a character like Hu Tao that is not very easy to play. Generally, the variant of this team I like the most is with both Shin Cho and Yelan, and then Kazuha, because Kazuha makes the output of the team in AoE more meaningful, and since the team is already pretty great in single target, I feel like more AoE is most of the time more needed than more single target. It really feels like the easiest team to play in the world with Kazuha actually, which is weird for Hu Tao, because you just have much more guaranteed damage. The much more classic variant of this team includes Zhongli, which is pretty good still, because 
this team still has a high damage floor, and having a comfort option such as John Lee while still having such high damage output is pretty great because you're still going to be able to reach the right HP thresholds in the right amount of time while basically being immortal. A similar case can be made for Toma. Toma is a pyro character that usually will disrupt the Hydro application on opponents if used on a team with just one Hydro character. But since you use two Hydro characters that have huge application, this never happens in Double Hydro. And is a pretty good defensive option, is not like Chung Li, but is pretty good and he also brings additional offensive benefits for Hu Tao specifically, especially at Constellation 6 for him, so is a pretty great option again. A crazier team variant to this that still has a defensive option is the Melt Vape team with Layla, which situationally will make you able to melt charge attacks with Hu Tao since Layla will freeze opponents sometimes. And it's nice, it's not particularly great compared to other options in terms of calculated damage, but it is an option and it's still good as a baseline. Alternatively, if you want to use your fourth slot more offensively, you can pick that Katsuva team I told you about before, the one with double hydro, and you can put Sucrose on there instead. Because Sucrose won't have the same positive effects as Katsuva in terms of buffing the hydro units, but her elemental mastery buffs for the whole team will benefit Hu Tao more. It's generally a worse team in AoE because Sucrose doesn't have even close to the grouping capability Kazuha can have, but it's still pretty good. Continuing this trend of offensive option as the fourth slot, another crazy alternative would be Fischl. The Electro application this character would provide for the team wouldn't be an issue because you got so much Hydro application that Hu Tao wouldn't lose vapes. And on the contrary, you add things like Electro Charge or Overload to the mix, which make the damage of the team a bit higher, and also you have Official's personal damage, which is nice in single target. A team that gets a lot of rep, but that I don't like that much anymore, is the Funerational team with Xiong Ling. The idea is using two high frequency vape units to vape most of the pyro aids on the team by abusing the huge hydro application you have with the Yanan and Qin Cho. And the result is that you have a team whose damage ceiling is theoretically higher than most of the other Hu Tao teams. But the issue is that you have a fourth slot on this team, Shen Ling, who has very huge energy requirements. And this just makes the team unnecessarily more inconsistent for a damage gain compared to most other teams that is pretty small in the big picture. Usually, whenever you start using a Shen Ling without a dedicated battery like Bennett, you start having issues, regardless of how much energy recharge you put on her. Something that is often underrated with Hu Tao is that using an instructor set with your non-damage unit, so somebody like Layla, Toma, Jung Li, Bennett, is actually a damage increase for the team in a significant way since it just benefits Hu Tao in terms of elemental master investment and it's obviously better than options like Tenacity of the Middle Elite, which produce useless, mostly useless attack percent in comparison. As a small last part, I'll give my take on the Constellation 1 Homa contention about Hu Tao, which goes back to 1.3 basically. Back in the day, we used to say that Homa and the Constellation 1 were basically equivalent in terms of damage increase, while the Constellation 1 also brought more comfort, so it was more advisable. But now that you have more good options for Hu Tao in terms of weapons like the new Battle Pass weapon, Sanyo's signature, there is a higher chance Homa has a lower relative value in terms of damage increase than the Constellation 1 for you. In the worst case scenario, the Constellation 1 is still a bit better to me because of the comfort, and in the best case scenario, it's just much better as an option, so go for that. And there you have it, this is the guide, see you next video.